Hey guys, welcome back. We are on chapter 16. We're almost finished with our book. It's our last week of distance learning. This is my last video for you guys because Miss Maddox will do the next two. So thanks for reading with me this book. I hope you'd enjoy. I hope you enjoyed it. So we're going to read chapter 16. Remember yesterday, chapter 15, she did get the package to Uncle Henrik or his lunch and she still doesn't know what is in there. So chapter 16, I will tell you just a little. Poor Blossom, Uncle Henrik said, laughing after dinner that evening. It was bad enough that your mother was going to milk her after all these years of city life. But Anne Marie, to do it for the very first time, I'm surprised Blossom didn't kick you. Mama laughed, too. She sat in a comfortable chair that Uncle Henrik had moved from the living room and placed it in a corner of the kitchen. Her leg in a clean white cast to the knee was on a footstool. Anne Marie didn't mind their laughing. It had been funny. When she had arrived back at the farmhouse, she had run along the road to avoid the soldiers who might still be in the woods. Now, carrying nothing, she was in no danger. Mama and Kirsty were gone. There was a note hastily written from Mama that the doctor was taking her in his car to the local hospital, that they would be back soon. But the noise from Blossom, forgotten, unmilked, uncomfortable in the barn, had sent Anna Marie warily out with, one, with the milking bucket. She had done her best trying to ignore Blossom's irritated snorts and tossing head, remembering how Uncle Henrik's hand had worked with a firm, rhythmic pulling motion. And she had milked. I could have done it, Kirsty announced. You only have to pull and it squirts out. I could do it easily. Anna Marie rolled her eyes. I'd like to see you try, she thought. Is Ellen coming back? Kirsty asked, forgetting the cow after a moment. She said she'd make me a dress for my doll. Anna Marie and I will help you make a dress, Mama told her. Ellen had to go with her parents. Wasn't that a nice surprise that the Rossins came last night to get her? Well, she should have waked me up to say goodbye, Kirsty grumbled, spooning some imaginary food into the painted mouth of the doll she had propped in the chair beside her. Anna Marie, Uncle Henrik said, getting up from the table and pushing his chair. If you come with me now to the barn, I'll give you a milking lesson. But wash your hands first. Me too, Kirsty said. Not you too, Mama said. Not this time. I need your help in here since I can't walk very well. You're going to have to be my nurse. Kirsty hesitated, deciding whether or not to argue. Then she said, I'm going to be a nurse when I grow up, not a cow milker. So I'll have to stay here and take care of Mama. Followed by an, an, as usual by the kitten, Anna Marie walked with Uncle Henrik to the barn through a fine misty rain that had begun to fall. It seemed to her that Blossom shook her head happily when she saw Henrik and knew that she would be in good hands again. She sat on the stacked hay and watched while he milked but her mind was not on the milking. Uncle Henrik, she asked, where are the Rosins and all the others? I thought you were taking them to Sweden on your boat, but they weren't there. They were there, he told her, leaning forward against the cow's broadside. You shouldn't know this. You remember that I told you it was safer for you not to know. But, he went on, as his hands moved with their sure and practiced motion, I will tell you just a little, because you were so very brave. Brave? Anna Marie asked, surprised. No, I wasn't. I was very frightened. You risked your life. But I didn't even think about that. I was only thinking of... He interrupted her, smiling. That's all that brave means. Not thinking about the dangers. Just thinking about what you must do. Of course you were frightened. I was too today. But you kept your mind on what you had to do. So did I. Now let me tell you about the Rosins. So he's saying that she was brave. She didn't feel brave. She was frightened. But she did what she had to do, keeping her mind on what must be done. Many of the fishermen have built hidden places in their boats. I have too, down underneath. I only have to lift the boards in the right place and there's room to hide a few people. Peter and the others in the resistance who work with him bring them to me, and to the other fishermen as well. These are people who hide them and help them along the way to Gillahee. Anne Marie was startled. Peter's in the resistance? Of course I should have known. He brings Mama and Papa the secret newspaper. They free Dons, and he always seems to be on the move. I should have figured it out myself. He is a very, 
very brave young man, Uncle Henrik said. They all are. Anna Marie frowned, remembering the empty boat that morning. Were the rosins and the others there too, underneath, when I brought the basket? Uncle Henrik nodded. But I heard nothing, Anna Marie said. Of course not. They had to be absolutely quiet for many hours. The baby was drugged so that it wouldn't wake and cry. Could they hear me when I talked to you? Yep, your friend Ellen told me later that she heard you. And they heard the soldiers who came and searched the boat as well. Anna Marie's eyes widened. Soldiers came? She asked. I thought they went the other way after they stopped me. There are many soldiers in Gillahee and all along the coast. They're searching all the boats now. They know that the Jews are escaping, but they're not sure how, and they can rarely find them. The hiding places are carefully concealed, and often we pile dead fish on the deck as well. They hate getting those shiny boots dirtied. He turned his head towards her and grinned. Anne-Marie remembered the shiny boots con confronting her on the dark path. Uncle Henrik, she said, I'm sure you're right that I shouldn't know everything, but please, would you tell me about the handkerchief? I knew it was important, the packet, and that's why I ran through the woods to take it to you. Then I thought it maybe was a map. How could a handkerchief be important? He set the filled pail aside and began to wash the cow's udder with the damp cloth. Very few people know about this, Anna Marie, he said with a serious look. But the soldiers are so angry about the escaping Jews and the fact that they can't find them that they've just started using trained dogs. They had dogs! the ones that stopped me on the path. Uncle Henrik nodded. The dogs are trained to sniff about and find people who are hidden. It happened just the other day on two boats. Those dogs, they go right up to the dead fish, through the dead fish to the human scent. We were all very, very worried. We thought it meant the end of the escape to Sweden by boat. It was Peter who took the problem to scientists and doctors. Some very fine minds have worked night and day trying to find a solution, and they have created a special drug. I don't know what it is, but it's in the handkerchief. It attracts the dogs, but when they sniff it, it ruins their sense of smell. Imagine that! Anne Marie remembered how the dogs had lunged at the handkerchief and smelt it and turned away. Now, thanks to Peter, we will each have such a handkerchief, each boat captain. When the soldiers board our boats, we will simply pull the handkerchiefs out of our pockets. The Germans will probably just think we all have bad colds. The dogs will sniff about, sniff the handkerchiefs we are holding, and then roam the boat and find nothing. They will smell nothing. Did they bring dogs on your boat this morning? Yes, not 20 minutes after you had gone. I was about to pull away from the dock when the soldiers appeared and ordered me to halt. They came aboard, searched, and found nothing. By then, of course, I had the handkerchief. If I had not, well, his voice trailed off, and he didn't finish the sentence. He didn't need to. If she had not found the packet where Mr. Rosin had dropped it, if she had not run through the woods, if the soldiers had taken the basket, if she had not reached the boat in time, all of the ifs swirled in Anna Marie's head. They're safe in Sweden now? she asked. Are you sure? Uncle Henrik stood and patted the cow's head. I saw them ashore. There were people waiting to take them to shelter. They are quite safe there. But what if the Nazis invade Sweden? Will the Rosins have to run away again? That won't happen, for reasons of their own. The Nazis want Sweden to remain free. It's very complicated. Anna Marie's thoughts turned to her friends, hiding under the deck of the Ingborg. It must have been awful for them, she said. So many hours there, she murmured. Was it dark in the hiding place? Dark and cold and very cramped. And Mrs. Rosin was seasick. Even though we were not on the water very long, it is a short distance, as you know. But they are courageous people, and none of that mattered when they stepped ashore. The air was fresh and cool in Sweden. The wind was blowing. The baby was beginning to wake up as I said goodbye to them. I wonder if I will ever see Ellen again, Anna Marie said sadly. You will, little one. You saved her life. After all, someday you will find her again. Someday the war will end, Uncle Henrik said. All wars do. Now then, he added, stretching, 
That was quite a milking lesson, wasn't it? Uncle Henrik, Amory shrieked and then began to laugh. Look, she pointed, the God of Thunder has fallen into the milk pell. So now we know why they needed the package so badly is because on the handkerchief was something that made the dogs want it and lunge for it, but then when they sniffed it, it numbed their sense of smell so they couldn't find any of the juice that were hiding underneath. So she didn't know all this when she was running through the woods and stopped by the soldiers and finally made it to the boat. Do you think that it was easier for her to be brave not knowing everything, not knowing that she held the tools, she held the handkerchief that literally saved her friend's life? So do you think it's easier not to know stuff to be brave even when she was really scared? Or do you think it's she should have known everything? It's your opinion, but also try to use evidence from the story or from your own life if it's easier to know everything to be brave or it's easier not. So that's the last time I'll be reading to you. Mrs. Maddox will read to you on Thursday and Friday. But I hope you've enjoyed the book and I'll see you later. Bye.